presentation today is with Hillcrest Energy Technologies, and we're going to hear from Don Curry, who is the CEO and founder. Don, welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to present to, uh, to a crowd. Um, I just need to get this going. Forward-looking statement, the necessary evil. Hillcrest Energy Technologies is uh, listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the symbol HEAT, H-E-A-T. We are a power conversion technology company. Uh, we're the first to market a revolutionary inverter technology platform, and it is a unique combination of uh, software and hardware. It's adaptable across the uh, electrification sector. It's a growing IP, IP portfolio, 100% owned by Hillcrest. Speed to market is an asset light business model. Uh, some of our benefits that we'll explain here in the, in the short period of time is that uh, our technology has a huge substantial benefit to automotive uh, manufacturers and can save them up to $2,200 savings per vehicle based on the efficiency and the EMC savings. Uh, up to about $13.2 million of additional solar power re uh, generator revenues over a 25-year period, $16 million of revenues uh, estimated over a 25-year period on a wind farm. We have significant technology and in industry experience. We're very proud of the team that we've amassed in a short period of time, 100 years combined automotive sector experience, 50 years combined grid connected. An inverter, for those of you that don't know, an inverter simply converts the power from direct current to alternating current or alternating current back to direct current or AC to AC, whatever. If you take a solar farm, the solar panels are direct current, the grid is alternating current. So you have to convert that power as it's been made into the proper form. Same as in, an, in a car, the battery is direct current, the motor is alternating current. It's essentially the heartbeat or the brains of the system. It's adaptable, as I've talked about, our technology is adaptable over many, many different sectors, wind, solar, power, energy storage, and the inverter global market is accelerating about 16.5% per year up to $117 billion by 2029. Our inverter is the most efficient inverter that we're aware of at about a 99.7%. It has a 50 kilowatt per liter power density, uh, up to 50% reduction in the size of a DC, DC link capacitor. So we've, we've been able to improve this at all levels, but what does it do across the system? So if you take an EV, for example, what we've been demonstrating is the, by using our inverter, you're able to reduce the battery pack by up to 15% in size. This is a, a substantial cost savings. It's a weight savings. It's uh, and, and batteries being in uh, battery material being in critical shortage. Uh, this is a real benefit for the automotive makers as they uh, as they have more battery material for more cars. Uh, onboard charger. Our technology will allow for the elimination elimination of the onboard charger and give the, uh, give the consumer uh, more convenience in how they plug the car in or, or charge it. A traction motor. We've shown that uh, in tests that our converter our inverter is able to increase the efficiency of some uh, electric motors by as much as 13%. Why is that important? It's important because it's estimated that for every 1% of uh, efficiency in a motor, there's approximately 2% more in range. So this is, this is, again, a very good consumer benefit. But most importantly, what we're being told by the industry right now, and we've been able to demonstrate, is that electrical magnetic interference, or EMI, is a huge problem for any electric field. EMI is, is basically a static or, or think of it as radiation coming off and it causes problems and people have to pay to protect against it. Our technology has shown that it meets a level whereby shielding is not required around cables, around batteries, around, around heat pumps, so on and so forth. And this is a significant savings and, and uh, eliminates a real headache for, uh, for the engineers that are working on these projects. This just gives another graph where up to $1,500 savings in battery costs, up to 300 pounds. This is a big part about the range. When you're looking at a, a, an automotive manufacturer that might be doing 100,000 vehicles in one model per year, this could represent a $220 million savings to them, which is substantial. Now, our inverter is about the same cost as what exists out there today. So we're estimating in around 1,500 uh, euros per per. Uh, uh, per per inverter, and if they're paying 1,500 euros per inverter and they're paying $1,500 for our inverter, but they're saving $2,200 per car or $220 on a, on a run, that's a massive savings and quite a sales 
sales tool for us. And the grid, uh, grid tied next generation capabilities, again, we're 99.7%. The saving uh, cost systems as they're building, there's up to a 45% reduction in the size of line filters. And again, up to 60% in DC link capacitors, improved power quality and harmonics, reduced electrical magnetic interference as mentioned, and the reliability and extended lifespan is a real benefit using the technology. I had mentioned earlier that uh, while costs are a consideration, the ability to bring in more revenue is a key, of course, in all, in all avenues. So an additional $13.2 million in potential revenues over the lifetime of a 250 megawatt solar farm. That's with a 2% increase in inverter efficiency. When we started this project, we were looking to be able to improve by about half a percentage point in the, in the grid related or stationary. We've reached about a 2% efficiency, efficiency increase. As I mentioned earlier, on a solar farm, this represents about $16 million over the life of a, a farm. Commercial activity is underway. In three short years, we've gone from research and development to development, and now we're in commercialization. This represents the number of different companies or organizations we're talking to across the globe. This is electrification is a, is a focus everywhere. The, uh, uh, the gray are the automotive activities. The blue are stationary and grid-tied activities. The team I mentioned earlier, we are incredibly proud of what we've done. Our CTO, Ari Berger, Chief Technology Officer, is a control system specialist. We partnered with and are aligned with Harold Hengstenberger and Systematic GB GmbH. Systematic is a power electronics design house that has been developing inverter technology for the German automotive industry for the last 20 years. They're located in Landsberg, Germany. We have two labs. Vancouver is where Ari is. That's a software-centric and, uh, and Germany is where the hardware centric is, Mirror Labs. It's a very, very good collaboration and was what created the combination of the uh, hardware and the software. Some of the people that are involved in the company as advisors, Dan Coker, he's built two $1 billion automotive component accessory or component companies. One is the internal tire pressure gauge and he was the first to mass produce heating and cooling in car seats. Dr. George Ber Berkhoff, Heinz George Berkhoff, he was 20 years senior manager with Dalmer Chrysler and was part of the team that started the EV division within Mercedes. And then Dan Matheson is a Canadian uh, consultant who is uh, uh, intimately involved in the, uh, in the utility industry within, uh, within Ontario and across Canada. As I mentioned, our symbol is heat. It's on the Canadian CSE, Canadian Securities Exchange, 78.6 million shares. Fully diluted shares, 106 million. Insider ownership is about 11%. New York family office owns about 5%. It's essentially a retail uh, held base. We are just in the process of uh, looking at family offices and institutional backing. In a quick summary, we're 100% IP owned in a, in a transformational technology that the world has tried to do for the last over 20 years. We've been able to crack the code. 99.7 peak inverter efficiency, the highest that we're aware of. Uh, the benefits that I've already talked to, $13.2 million solar power generation revenues. The $2,200 per vehicle savings is substantial. And then co-development projects, while I showed you well over 20, we have seven that are in advanced stage, both on the EV and in the grid-related power systems. With that, I hope it was a quick enough uh, update on where we are and look forward to any questions. Don, thank you so much. That was a terrific presentation. Um, I do have a couple of questions that have come in. In terms of the technology, is it is it applicable across um, the entire electric uh, electrification spectrum? Yeah, it is. This is we started with EV and 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 and, and now are running parallel with grid, but it, it's across anywhere where power conversion is needed, taking direct current to alternating current. You're finding inverters across the globe in almost any electrical system. So this is uh, this literally has hundreds of different applications that can be used. We've concentrated on a higher power model. We have a 350 kilowatt, uh, thousand volt inverter. So uh, cars, solar farms, wind farms, so on and so forth. But it is applicable across the spectrum. Okay, super. And are there any priority differences in your tech versus the existing standard technology? You know, when we set out to do it, the soft switching was was the key. So we were looking for zero voltage switching, which created the higher efficiency. And that's basically higher switching frequencies and it eliminates switching losses. That, in fact, it created a higher efficiency, which was key. 
what we're finding is the fact that we now have a lower EMC or EMI level where people don't have to pay to protect against EMI, that's become the focus for almost every person or every group that we're talking to. So our, our substantial difference right now is the low enough EMI or EMC whereby protective shielding may not be required. Okay, super. Thanks, Don. Um, and a final question. Why wouldn't the automotive sector address this on their own? Well, they've tried. They've tried, quite frankly. When the first year that we uh, we were uh, uh, talking to people about going into soft switching, we were met with skepticism. Until we had a commercial prototype that we're actually taking to, to their facilities, we were told it couldn't be done. Taking it to their facilities, putting it on their test bench, and demonstrating it with their motors on their test bench, um, we were kind of met with skepticism. So they have tried, and for whatever reason, we're the only ones that we're aware of that is uh, that has cracked the code. So the automotive industry is uh, very open and, and accessing and, and in very advanced dialogue with us. Okay, super. Um, and sorry, one final, final question. Um, how far away do you think this is from being implemented into, into the sector? Well, we're at that now. There's there's three or four traditional milestones that we go forward. There's low load uh, uh, testing, max load testing in our facilities, and there's then there's testing in the actual OEMs facility or in in uh, stationary in, in the utilities facility. We're in the OEMs facilities as we speak, doing testing and showing it, and are in discussions regarding uh, what that will mean commercially, what the numbers are, how they want to access it, so on and so forth. And that includes with tier one suppliers as well. So. Uh, our our in vehicle testing would we would anticipate there would be some this year as far as on the road and out on the road in in vehicles within a two year period is the objective. Terrific. Okay, that's exciting. It's not too far away. Uh, yeah. One, thank you so much for your presentation.